This is the Crease Cast. Well, folks, after all that keyboard talk, welcome to the Crease Cast. I am your host, Cody Sievertson. With me, as always, is Lachlan from San Jose Urban. Actually, no, sorry, Petaluma. Nuts. Wait, were you actually born in I San Jose? Pet- no, I have dude. Friends there. I'm, dude, I'm born in Vancouver. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm well born then... at Burnaby General, like everybody else here. No. Okay, so then I was born at Children's. So you're born. Mm. Oh, fair. Oh, sh- rich show people. off. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> not even Richmond. Uh, you darn mille- you darn millennials. Uh, or yeah, I was. Years born at- <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So wait, you have friends in you have friends in Petaluma or yeah. Santa- What? No, you don't. Shut yes, up. I do. Yes, I do. Where? Where? That's, really? That's, that's nuts. Mm-hmm. That's a small world, man. We that just, is an insanely small fact to find out right in this exact I, moment. I was just Have talking to my been? sister the other day, no. and she was telling me that apparently some of her friends in Eng- London, England, like just randomly ran into other like friends from like her high school, and were like, <laughs> so it was like she had found out like there was just like a collection of people from Port Moody, just like all hanging out in London, England, and she just happened to run into them one day. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know Chandler. You know Chandler? Oh, weird. That's so like weird. a bit, bit of a small world kind of situation. So that's kind of neat. But anyways, folks, you do not want to hear about our friend groups or our relationships <laughs> or, or lack whatever. thereof. Or lack thereof. <laughs> the, the unending loneliness of our lives. What you want to hear about is the unending loneliness of being a Canucks fan and how there is still a smidgen of hope. Because, folks... It is a Monday afternoon, 5.30, Easter Monday. Some of you had the day off. Some of you didn't. I didn't. And that's why my face is really red and I'm wearing a filthy shirt. And we're here to talk about a big game tonight. We're all going to be watching it after this. That's why we're recording a bit early so we can recap the game or uh, watch the game fully invested. It's Dallas. It's Vancouver. Season is absolutely on the line. And family did you not know this i didn't i didn't learn this until today but the- yeah. try and figure out a group a group I'm going uh, to game more. at some point we're gonna try and figure out a group buy the tickets for my link yeah oh yeah go. we will oh yeah we will we will oh yeah because is that for the king's game or is that for uh, no it's for the cracking uh, game ah Cody, my enemies <laughs> Your <laughs> I hate that. Uh, we, we can do a crease cast meetup. Um, God, yeah, because they play Ottawa tomorrow, or the I think the day after, which is the rescheduled game from yeah. January. In tomorrow. fact, we yeah right. tomorrow. In, in fact, we even have a we have a video on the crease cast YouTube channel where I uh, simulated that game uh, on using <laughs> NHL ninety five uh, subtle plug or NHL ninety seven <laughs> one or the other the one with John Van Beesbrook on the cover. Um, but yeah, like oh, this is I course. mean. Yes, that game does, but the this that that Ottawa game doesn't matter all too much if you don't win this one because this yeah. is very this is not only is this just a team you're fighting with for for a playoff for playoff positioning it's also like it's just a double it's a double point game essentially like they always joke it's like it's like a four point game because if you lose you drop two and the team gains two more on mm-hmm. you so. And the way the Canucks are playing, and the way the Canucks have been playing, it is possible that they could walk in and just have a and have a decent night. But Dallas is one of those teams that has given them trouble many times before, um, and so you have to hope that they get the same kind of result they did the last time the Canucks and Stars played, where Thatcher Demko stood on his head and the rest of the team backed it up, including some guys who are not on the ice anymore, like Nils Hoaglander had a re- I think had a pretty good game against Dallas. And now video. he's not here. Don't say that. <laughs> neither is Mo Horvat. Neither is Mo Horvat. Neither is uh, apparently. Okay, so the, like I heard this on the radio today, and I I could have sworn I have watched the last like seven or ten Canucks games like really in depth. I did not notice or realize Tanner Pearson was not in the lineup. How dare yeah, you? Right. I know. Right. I feel bad. I feel bad because he's a very lovely person. But, and he's uh, done. Out. And he's done well this year. He's, he's had a good with- season, but so yeah. I felt really bad when. They were like, "Oh, Tanner Pearson's out, you know, Bor- and he's or Bo Horvat's out, and he's joining Tanner Pearson." That was like, "Tanner Pearson's yeah. missing? What? Yeah. I, <laughs> Did I what? not see that?" <laughs> to defend to defend you slightly, I do think like I kind of agree in a sense, but that's mainly because I think while even though Tanner Pearson has been gone, the group, the players behind have, him like, in the depth chart have actually been stepping up a lot in giving the Canucks some scoring. Like Alex mm-hmm. Chason has been a guy who's obviously. <laughs> Like, as we all expected, as we as we all predicted, has been the playoff catalyst that uh, we all need that the city needs. Uh, and it's been and Vasily Podkolzin. You want to talk about him? Like he's been 
incredible. Uh, like, yeah, the Tanner Pearson's absence has been kind of like muted just because of the fact that the groups behind him have done so well, which is why, like, if they get him back before the end of the season, hey, they mm -hmm. might actually have some, they might have a shot here. Provided the shot is still alive at that They're point. Right if the shot is still alive. I mean, hey, the Blues did the Blues did did their part last night. They beat uh, the Predators eight to three. Oh my yes. god, a crushing they, defeat. They scored six goals in the second period. In the second period, all even strength. It's so yeah, <laughs> uneven strength when as it pertains to the Dallas Stars. I heard this on the radio today, which blew my mind. The Dallas Stars have a record in their last 10 of six two and two they're on a one game winning streak you know how many even strength goals they've scored during that time i don't three. think three yeah <laughs> three yeah. which oh my is god baffling to think of yeah. when you're like how can a team have like a 700 points percentage and somehow only score three even strength goals like that is ridiculous ridiculous they're really good at drawing penalties <laughs> goaltending goaltending has been bailing them out for a while here jake ottinger had a really good has been playing really well mm -hmm. uh scott wedgwood had a shutout this is a guy who was on the coyotes not that long ago <laughs> That's i think they, they claimed him. him off waivers at one i think the coyotes claimed him off waivers yeah. from another team i think new from jersey the Devils. yeah yeah exactly and now here he is getting shutouts at like key moments against, I think it was Tampa too, or something ridiculous. Like it was somebody just, it was just, it was like no business. Yeah. It was, I think it was Tampa. They won two, nothing over Tampa, uh, simply because Amazing. Uh, Scott Wedgwood stood on his head and we they love couldn't. Incredible. We, love we, it. we love to see it, but at the same time, we don't love to see it because that is the <laughs> yes. type of game where I'm like, okay, Tampa's going to win. And of course they just decide, nope, this is the game where we're going to take the entire night off and not mm -hmm. help the Canucks in any way. Yeah. Um, the Canucks have not gotten any luck on the out of town scoreboard pretty much through their entire run yeah, since that's like Boudreaux took over. They've been putting in tons of work to make up ground, but it's like been this snail's pace. And even when, they earn games in hand and they pick up points for whatever reason. The other teams always come up big Dallas. Like I said, three even strength goals, but yet they somehow steal games. They close them out. And I pointed this out on a podcast that I guested on the other night in Roxy fever that do you know how many overtime points the Canucks have? Um, I think 10, 10 or something, right? Yeah. Every team they're chasing, with the exception of Los Angeles, has half as many. So it's like those are killers when like for all the complaints of the Canucks, like, you know, you know, they're taking so long to finally get things in gear. Like they still struggled to put games away. And the teams that they're chasing are very good at putting games away, as we've seen with Vegas, Nashville and Dallas. They on paper are struggling, they are hemorrhaging players, and yet they're earning points when they, you know, if you're the Canucks fan, you really didn't want them to, but they keep doing it, which yeah. is a bit rude. So tonight's <laughs> a big night because I think, who is it that plays? It's uh, Vancouver, Dallas, and then Vegas is playing, oh, New Jersey. Okay, is so, New Jersey? Well, 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 that point, that one, that one's not going their way. Now, here's the thing, though. <laughs> I will I will say there might be a team more vulnerable than Vegas. I think Vegas is one of those teams that, well, I, I, I think the writing's on the wall with them a little bit. I think their schedule is pretty, like, uh, is, is, like it's not great for them, but it's also, mm -hmm. like, the, the Knights are the Knights. They'll figure a way out. Right. I'm looking at, like, L.A., who has two games, who has two, who has played two more games than the Canucks but they're only sitting six points in front and that could go very quickly. That's a kind of lead that could disappear pretty quickly. I think they've been, mm -hmm. and they've been four or five and one. So they haven't been necessarily fantastic on this last little yeah, stretch here. They're, they're like hanging on. Yeah. 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 I think that, I think that they look a little bit more vulnerable to me if I'm the Canucks, especially considering you have a game against the Kings uh, in the last week of the season, I believe their second to last game of the year. Mm -hmm. which could make or break that kind of that sway that, especially like given how long it usually takes to catch a team that's six points up, even if you have games in hand, like there, it takes that little bit of extra time. The thing that's also hurt the Canucks more than anything is how often as, as fun as it is to watch the Canucks make like big Epic comebacks in the third period, 
they've had to do that a few too many times where they have been behind the eight ball going into like that last 20 minutes of the game and Mm -hmm. had to come back. And then of course there's only enough time for them to get the first point. They don't have enough time to get all to get two, and, and finish it in regulation. They have to, they have to try and win it in three on three overtime. And they usually lose. (laughs) And they usually usually lose. I've been to three of those losses. It's very sad. (laughs) Yeah. I, I was at, I was at one game. I was at the one game against the Panthers that they lost, uh, which I guess they lost in a shootout technically. But part of the reason they lost, they had to go to a shootout at all is because for some reason, Bruce Boudreaux decided, you know what would be a really good line at three on three <laughs> overtime? Oh, uh, yeah. Tyler Mott, Yuho Lamico, and Oliver Ekman Larson. <laughs> Let's throw them out yeah. there instead of, I don't know, Pedersen, Hughes, and Besser and see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, they got hemmed in their own zone for two and a half minutes. And mm-hmm. I was watch- sitting there watching them watching poor spencer martin having to do his absolute best and i'm like i was just screaming like i don't i don't yell at the at the at at the game much when i'm there because again like your media you can't really do that no anymore but you're just like i'm just like what are you doing get these get these guys off the ice of all people to put on the ice in a in a, a game where points are absolutely essential like yeah. Oh my God. Shoot it think. into the bench, Yuho. Come on. Just, sh- just throw it anywhere. Get a face off, please. Like, <laughs> do anything else. Shoot it, else shoot it on your own right? net so Martin can cover it. Like, do something. I, I think, think you're right. I think a broke. stick. I think someone's stick did break, so it was basically like a a three v two for like the entire two yeah. minute period. Yeah. I'm pretty something sure like, Lammy's stick broke, or yeah, something, something happened that he couldn't do something. anything. Something Classic. like that, but I was just like, "Oh my god, this wouldn't have been a problem if you played." I don't know, like nine other players Literally that you have. Else. Like you have so many other options. It, Nils it Hoaglander was... hasn't played in like ten minutes. You could no. use him. <laughs> don't it, say that. <laughs> it was one of those things where it's like you. Everyone's kind of trusting in Bruce Boudreau to know what he he's doing, right? And like, well, he's gotten all these wins so far, so maybe he knows something that we don't. And then he tried no. it and everyone's no. like oh so maybe we do know we don't do know a bit more than the coach and you should never put those two out yeah. the <laughs> and just to be fair like he's he's earned the benefit of the doubt in a lot of ways but yeah. like there are certain things like but that just because a guy's winning a bunch of games doesn't mean he's without like uh there's he's he's done it perfectly like there are mm-hmm. definitely times where i'm watching bruce boudreau and some of the in the lineup decisions he make he makes less so lately than uh than 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 before especially with like guys like put calls in but there it's were gotten better it's there were some times where better. you and i before before jamie jo- joined this uh ragtag production we used to talk about all the time where we're like you know we like the boudreaux bub but there's some serious asterisks and red flags about the way he deploys his lineup sometimes that make you go uh, are you uh, sure? especially when it comes to like the young guys where like younger players were getting way less ice time compared to say like a guy like Matthew Highmore or a guy like mm-hmm. Yuho Lamico guys who are very, who did fine and kept like weirdly scoring a bunch of goals. But overall it's like, well, you know, but Colton's in down the ro- long term is going to be um, playing him in like the PK or giving him a uh, more ice time on like the power play is going to be more beneficial to you long term shouldn't mm-hmm. you be playing him right now instead or Nils Hoaglander like those two guys who have done as well as they have when the, you give them big opportunities to play so it was it was really weird seeing them get moved to the end of the bench in favor of like the the depth guys and yeah. now again whether or not that's due to maybe the fact that they're a little more depleted now and it's kind of a well I don't re- he doesn't really have a choice then to play but goals in as much as he does right now because obviously you're missing a lot of guys like (laughs) that's one that could be one thing yeah everyone uh god (laughs) bo horvat's done for the season apparently which is a bit of a which is a bit of a problem and very very sad considering how amazing how good he's been and also just like it wasn't even like a it didn't look like it was a bad thing he took like if we want to talk about horvat's injury like he i think he just took a shot to the leg and it just hit him in the hit him in the sweet spot wrong which is, spot yeah which is uh never what you want to see um but yeah it's i find it really awesome that his his career his season turnaround kicked off when he started liking tweets by that guy yeah. uh 
I don't even remember his account. They don't need a they don't need a plug. He doesn't need a plug, but he's always an asshole on Twitter. So at like basically like liking all his tweets, like fuck you. Like I'm gonna literally cry my ass off. Literally the best for being a little bitch. Literally the best captain in the NHL. Yeah, like we should we should see more of that. Like you know how cool it would be. Like at at the end of the season, like say like Patterson finishes his season eclipsing all his career point totals and then he goes on twitter and he just like quote tweets all the people saying they should trade him or like he's shrimpy or like he can't do it how fucking cool that would be or like the the one guy remember he's like um i don't want to like, see I an don't... instagram post from pd oh, yeah i would you know like, what he, needs to he, do. Should po- he should post an instagram thing with like his like like a Thing that Canucks make that's like a uh, career high or career totals, and he tags the guy in it. <laughs> oh. oh, you know what he should do? He should make he should post an Instagram post where he's wearing like a sweatshirt that has that tweet printed on it. Oh, where he's for just, sure. and he's just, he got he's got to do something like that. Like that's the kind of like like super cool move that like you'd see from like NBA players or like NFL players. NHL players are a lot less likely to be that cool. But Pedersen, if there's one guy who is like who's got the chutzpah to do it, it's Pedersen. Like I, he's a hundred percent would do it. Absolutely, that. he would do I, it. I have some contacts at the uh, Canucks organization, and my company that I will not uh, name uh, delivers redacted products to them. I wonder if I got this said jersey or shirt printed, I could just get it in his hand somehow. Maybe. You may be good. I might have to reach out. You might have to reach out to your your many many sources. My sources, yes. Your sources. Um, But yeah, other other than the Dallas game, which we're uh, nervously anticipating because the puck drop's going to be in about an hour and 10 minutes now or hour and 20. Yep. We're, we're it's kind of like a little like this, this is the moment right like i mean we, we've said that every game right where after before every episode we're like well tonight's game or tomorrow's game really is gonna decide the season and then something will happen a few days later where you're like ah well maybe things change but this yeah. this game in particular especially with uh vegas playing new jersey on the out of town scoreboard as well it definitely feels like if they can't square this away in regulation, like that's kind of it for the push. Like it yeah. dies tonight or it lives on. Yeah. Um, what would big, you, what would you both say? Like, what do you think the odds are that they can win it, put square this away in regulation? I honestly think they've got a good shot today. Like, I think the stars are coming in a little bit. Like, I, I don't want to say gassed. I don't think that's it, but like, they're definitely missing some key goaltenders. Like they don't have Braden Holtby right now. Um, they're, they're playing a little, I think a little bit shorthanded in, in certain aspects and they've been, and they've done pretty well this season, but I, I just look, I don't know why, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just the fact that the Canucks themselves have been playing really well lately, but I just kind of see them. I see the stars as a little bit vulnerable coming in here, especially after the last, the way the stars played in the last, the last time these two teams met, because you and I've talked about it before about how in how there's something to like, Oh, certain teams are built to beat certain other teams. Even if on paper, one is clearly better. Like mm-hmm. we've talked about it before, how in years past the stars, for whatever reason, no matter they were better than the Canucks on paper or not, for some reason, just gave them a hard time every time they played them. Yeah. This year hasn't been that way. The Canucks beat the, the Canucks beat the stars in that one game at home. I think like seven to four yeah. and the game that like completely launched their power play back into, into playing normally. Uh, mm-hmm. They beat them three to one in Dallas, a, a city that they've had a lot of, for some reason, weird reason, just had a hard time winning games in for in years past. There, there, that that kind of boogeyman seems to have disappeared for the Canucks a little bit here, and I think that the way that they're playing right now, they're playing with enough confidence that even with some of the guys that they're missing, and the fact the fact that they're getting Brock Besser back tonight. And have a group that's playing more or less with their most confident hockey the entire season, particularly guys like Pedersen, guys like Put Coles in, uh, just stepping up and having big nights routinely. Guy, hey, depth guys too, like Chase on as well. Like you can, and which in a way is almost more important because of the fact because you know the top guys are going to score regularly. Seeing those depth guys actually get opportunities and win games for them is almost more important. So, and the fact that they've been doing so against, even even if it's against a team like Arizona, is still important because they're proven that they can they can make a difference. 
I, I honestly think the Canucks have a really good shot to win today. And I honestly think that this is going to be like, this could be the difference maker here. Jamie, as the newest uh, member of said crease cast organization, are you as positive as Lachlan that they are going to somehow keep the streak going, keep the streak alive, make it six straight and keep the playoff chase alive? Or are you a negative defeatist like myself and think this is where it all dies? I think that um, they'll probably, I think they could do it. that's some definite like that's some definite stockholm syndrome playing into the (laughs) answer like i think i want to believe (laughs) i need to believe i think the answer is out there i think they'll worry us in the first period just have the stars like (laughs) boys that pounding them and then suddenly the next two periods are just normal like they're, they'll play great and then like and then you just hope that they don't let in like and then a in the lot third of goals period, in the first period yeah in the third period after you know mounting the comeback making it four to three get whatever, in. <laughs> they get hemmed in the zone in the final seven minutes of the period they yep. give up a softy and they go to overtime and lose or or win but it doesn't matter because they gave up a point to the one it's opponent they night. really can't give it to them is it what what theme is it tonight i think it's uh, is it gender equality night i think tonight? so i think so it's, I think so, yeah. I think it is. Oh, hell um, yeah. They have yeah. won one theme night. They've won, they've won one theme night? Oh, <laughs> I God. think so. Oh, there's think there's so. a content tweet right now as you just tweet oh, wait, that no. out. We, we won the... the oh, they won Pride Night, I think, right? No. Really? I went oh, to Pride didn't. Night. We lost. Because oh. oh. Netsoff uh, had a hat trick. Oh, that's right. They won in overtime, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, well, yeah. that was a bummer. Oh, God. I yeah. was there. So sad. Okay. So, okay, guys. So the the <laughs> other thing though is you and I, you you Jamie, you and I believe that there's a shot that they make the playoffs here. It's a slim, it's a slim window, but I we feel they can do it. Cody, you have been. Uh, there was the other day you were tweeting. You're like, here's all the things the Canucks have to do to go. Yes. <laughs> shall make... I bu- shall I pull up my tweet? That sure. That why not? Riled up the nation. This show's, this show's been cool. this this show's been happy today. Why, why not ruin it? Yeah. Let's let's add some little Cody. It's been happy for here. two weeks. Yes. Yeah. If <laughs> every team's last ten point percentage holds over the final stretch of the season, the Vancouver Canucks will miss playoffs by four points as the ninth ranked team in the conference have to go undefeated and hope Dallas, Vegas, and Nashville go on huge losing streaks. And that still remains true, uh, what is it, three days later? Because everyone's basically kept pace with the Canucks. They've made no ground despite winning against Six Arizona. In Five in a row. Yeah, Six like... How, like how bleak is that like i mean it's not bleak i mean, I mean good they, for them. they dug their grave like i mean yeah but it, it is not, it is yeah. a bit of like it's a like a pure gr- victory like hey great you guys proved you're not as bad as you were to start the season but at the end of the day it's too little too late and it doesn't matter because the current organizational people in charge are going to be like hey great they came back we don't give a shit like you guys are like are bad you guys started the season looking like shit we don't care we want yeah. you to be good from the start of the season. So we don't care if you could come back. We want you to be as good as you are at the end as you were at the start. And you don't deserve a chance. No matter how good they play. Like, it doesn't matter. They got to make decisions on Besser or Miller or whoever. Their entire decor. So it's like, sure, all things... Like, they need all these things to shake their way. And if they get into playoffs, like I feel like Jim Rutherford and Alvin are still going to be like, yeah, great. All the bounces went their way and they squeaked in. Which let's let's be clear though, that's a very good thing. That's a very good mentality it's, for them to have because as opposed to previous years where they'd yeah. be like, see, this is what exactly what we built them to do. Finish yeah. in seventh and hope for to <laughs> yeah. the love of God that everything works out for them. So you know, honestly, like that's fine. I will take that any day of the week over. We've always said you live day to day and you get in as a second wild card spot and anything can happen. Just look at the blues, you know, that team that finished last, that, that was last at the beginning of January. Just ignore the fact that they made the playoffs like every single year for like seven straight years and had routinely <laughs> good teams. Just, just ignore all that. That has nothing to do with it that's it and it's incredibly important to remember like when they lost or they beat the blues they had come off like this gigantic covid outbreak and we're only like two weeks removed from them all coming back i mean yeah but and also bennington's just not that good (laughs) 
but he was that. he was still not as bad as he'd become like that i honestly think after covid the COVID, their covid outbreak is when actually everything fell apart for him because he wasn't awful that season he was still and, okay but they the were connection... they were in the actual playoffs like they weren't uh, a playing team right they they're in their spot yeah they were doing okay and they got to their covid outbreak and things kind of went to hell for them yeah and now you look at the team now obviously not off the backs of jordan binnington but they're playing fucking unreal yeah, they're really good. The Blues are the Blues have had a the Blues have had a resurgence despite not really like well, I guess they've added a couple pieces. Like Tori Krug is there now. Mm-hmm. I think I think Justin Folk was not there the first time. He was there for he the w- bubble year. He was there, I believe, for the the year after the bubble year, but he had a rough season because he was playing behind someone, I think. Like he was on so the I third chance. It was weird. Petrangelo, who's now a night. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. The- I think you're right. I think he joined for the bubble, but he was playing third pair because they still had Petrangelo at the time. Yeah. And so it was like they made, went out and acquired him and like they had no role for him. It was just like really yeah. good quality depth. But now that he's been elevated up the lineup with Petrangelo gone, it's like his his deployment has completely changed. So like he's actually like useful again, like as useful as he was when he was um, with uh, whoever the fuck, Carolina or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, was that, was that it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was, right. he was a right hurricane. Things. Yeah, he was a hurricane for quite a while. And yeah. we're yeah, I look at well, like I will, like I'll say this, like the the, the Blues <laughs> as a playoff team, they've been really part of the reason they've been so good as well is because they've gotten more consistent goaltending from Billy Huso this year, yeah. and that's why they they've actually beaten the Canucks a few times this year. They 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 have they have goaltending that that can actually handle it. That's uh, how you that's how you know the St. Louis Blues are actually kind of legit this year is that they're beating the Canucks because the Canucks have like historically just had the blues number. Yeah. That's that's, why, that's why why in the bubble, you and I were both like, they're going to beat them. Like, yeah, there's there's no way they don't. I, I, and we talked about, and to bring it all full circle to Dallas, there were, it was, it was between Dallas and St. Louis that year for the bubble. And I did not want Dallas in any way, shape or form, because I knew the Canucks were going to have a harder time with them. Whereas I think they had like chased Jordan Bennington from the net already, like once that season. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and, and beaten him in the other. And it was like, okay, this guy's, this guy's easy pickings. Let's go. Let's take this. And then sure enough, they chased him from the net, like three times in St. Louis in the, in the series. Lucky. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, uh, like, eh, but yeah, like the, the way that the the blues have been playing a lot better. Like the blues are one of those teams that very well could win a cup. They've also had Tarasenko, I think, come back fully healthy this year. Jordan uh, Kyrou's whereas, like yeah. had a standout Jordan season. Kyrou, Jesus, he's been incredible. Yeah. Robert like Thomas as well, to, like yeah. getting notice around the league for like his playmaking ability. Like basically like they sold on Petrangelo. And I think a lot of people were like, oh, they lost That's Petrangelo. It. They're screwed. And then. They kind of just like ignored the fact that like they picked up like Pavel Buknevich. They had Jordan. I mean, they didn't know Jordan Kyrou was going to be like this monster or like rookie, but at least not nonetheless, right away, no. he took the steps necessary. And the bets on Falk and Krug ended up paying off. And now they've yeah. got what is it? They have like three 30 goal scorers or something like that. Or they're on pace to have Jeez. three or four 30 goal scorers. Like they're, they're like a sleep, sleepy contender for like upsetting i would say like the colorados or like the minnesotas in playoffs and being a conference semi or a finalist that would be my prediction at least yeah. you know who else is on pace to have 330 goal scores the canucks might actually get that done uh oh. jt miller's only one away Oof. and patterson needs only three so they're oh, at, I, and because Hor, horvat has Horvat already had it right Hor, yeah, Horvat finished 31. with 31 uh which is just incredible considering how long it took it Patterson to get going the fact that he now has 30 like thir- nearly 30 goals is awesome and i don't think that's even including brock in this who is i think was well he's not even close. close he had like is he 14, not close he's like 14 oh that's goals. right that's he's right. had a he's terrible become... year he got like, better as the season went on his production got a lot better he was also a guy that struggled under travis and then it, it like, picked up we, when he got boudreaux when i say he's had a terrible year i'm not like trying to be like oh he's a dick he sucks i mean it like it's almost like a good thing for the canucks because you know what's good when a guy in a qualifying offer year has a bad season you can do team elected arbitration and try and get that that seven and a half million down on his next year's contract so this is great for them like 
Brock Besser probably hates it. Like when he had his arm injury, I'm sure he's returning purely because he needs to keep whatever negotiating power he has heading into this uh, off season. But man, if you're Alvin and Rutherford, you're like, Oh, thank God. We're not going <laughs> to yeah. lose him for nothing. <laughs> God, they, yeah. Cause that would be a, dis- Oh God, they really, cause they really need him to fit. They really need him on this team long-term. Like they, there's no way they can go without him. You're going to have to pay Brock Besser. I, and, t- and not to their, like it's not their fault, but I do believe there's a lot of, as I said earlier, there's a lot of Stockholm syndrome in, amongst the fan base where it's like, if they did lose Besser for nothing, it would be like a lot of the fans that are worried that this regime is just exactly the same as the Benning regime where they lose assets for nothing. They fail to monetize when they need to. So if it's like your first year ends with losing like this beloved, adorable little dumb boy, blonde hockey player, that's not a really good look my hair twin <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my, totally yeah me my too. hair tw- yeah well yeah we got the we got the flow here we got the flow going i can't i, I had flow have, once yeah you had flow you had flow once and then you became and then you became a, a married pair a married father of one of one I, dog uh, yes and uh, a cat and a cat as well i should have called my dog brock he's got the blonde locks he's dumb he does and annoying. Well, that, well that's for dog well that's for dog too brock's that's not the- annoying i well, he's annoying in that he's not playing good. Oh, my maybe God. he should he should stick off of he's Instagram. Uh, thank you, thank when you. When is he uh, on Instagram? Call- <laughs> okay, like, thank you, caller. I, thank you. Uh, this no, is the the the, the six fifty hotline uh, yeah. text inbox. So, uh, sometimes I think of like really dumb guy tweets. Like I don't know if you guys do this, but like I think uh, of like tweets where like like a you would you could picture someone actually thinking where you're like, you know, Trevor Linden came back in the finals. Uh, with pain medication to play through an injury and Bo Horvat can't that's why he's a shitty captain and then you tweet God, it yeah. and you just like rile like, up everybody you just think it, it's like the there's a movie about that well sort of where I think where it's like what is it like Patton Oswalt is playing like a guy who just calls into New York rate sports radio <laughs> and that's his whole thing and that's his whole, all he does and that and it's like well and it's like this whole movie about like this guy about the ecosystem of like people who literally make a name for themselves and become famous as hey it's uh it's uh joey from the Bronx. go ahead like that's like their whole thing and just saying this real outlandishly crazy shit like that is exactly what they think that's exactly what i think of sometimes like yeah Yeah. oh i've 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 heard some there's some good stories about stuff like that uh it's but um yeah, I think I, I do. So you don't think the Canucks are going to make the playoffs, though? Is there? I wanted to ask you: Is there any way you're willing to put like, or can we put a bet on this? Can we put a bet on this for the end of the, well? The end. Of the I believe you here? pitched in the chat a yes. a spicy hot wing or something like that. In- yes, hot one style. We go. We get some really spicy. We get some really spicy hot sauce. Get some get some boneless wings and just see how you and just see whoever if i if the canucks Jamie's miss the playoffs head, like, jamie does jamie you don't have to be a part of this this can just be me versus cody here amazing i'll film you, it you can be yes um, exactly you can be there you can ref you can ref we'll get you a, we'll get a referee uh we'll get you a big old referee shirt i'll take uh, the bet uh, i'll take the bet anyway because i love spice okay. i i think i told i think i told you or maybe i can't remember but i maybe? i I ordered in spice from one of my favorite spices places in Maui, Hawaii. It oh, cost me right. like 120 bucks for like, I don't know, like eight bottles, but this chef's kiss scorpion oh, spice. Yeah. Check it out. If you're ever Same. in Maui, check out this little stand in the uh, open market. Look, cute little stand, probably like the size of my cube. If you're watching our YouTube channel, it's like really tiny and it's just walls of spices. And they let you sample with a little teeny stinky little spoon. It's the cutest little thing. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'll absolutely take that bet. They are not going to make right. playoffs, and I will bet whatever whatever spicy wing you can concoct, and I will bring my own spices. Yeah. To I the feel mix. like that's almost the thing is if whoever wins gets to pick what the spicy thing is, right? Like that feels yeah. like the sure. That feels but like I that feel feels like, like there, yeah. I feel like I win regardless though because I've been watching a ton of hot ones like hey. while, while doing dog stuff, and uh, I every time I watch that show. I it always go to, I go to like skip the dishes or DoorDash and I look for like wings and I'm yeah. like, I want to like, get the sauce. What kind of, what kind of wings can I get here? I'm really yeah. craving some wings here. I don't know why. Like, yeah. <laughs> what yeah if it I don't out- really eat wings, but like after that show, I'm just like, what, what if it turned game. out hot ones was like concocted by like KFC is like subliminal messaging to like get you to buy like their food or something. I, I or, like, absolutely buy that. Yeah. 
Oh, there we go. I'll get some Popeye. We'll get some Popeye sandwiches and we'll just dunk some Ooh. like hot one sauce Ooh. on there. Okay, you're just making me hungry. Like, what are we doing? Uh, I'm making you hungry. Yeah, I okay, we got to move now. on. We better move me on too. in the show then. Let's get, yeah, let's get yeah. to a new topic before I just like leave. I'm hungry. Start <laughs> salivating on camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, next thing on the list we got here. Eastern Conference, all, already everyone's clinched. That one's been sealed up. I honestly think since like October, November. I think someone, someone even threw out like a Reddit um, uh, GIF or whatever. And it was like, the standings as they changed over like the days and it was like the east conference like was set like two weeks into it and then all it changed was like everyone's positions in the top three and then that's it it's just held ever since yeah. uh well, man it's... we were talking about this before the show recorded you're very much not the proponent of florida is going to possibly win the stanley cup so we can maybe have a little side hustle a little side bet uh on uh, some delicious oh, wings on oh, whether yeah. or not they do it we got a but, bra- we're gonna do the bracket challenge i'm sure before the before certainly the we're gonna do certainly we will. show you can look forward to that show when we uh come up with it probably on youtube format you check out our youtube channel youtube.com yeah. slash creasecast um yeah. but what a rough time of year to be the florida panthers where you're like just unstoppable and then oh wait everyone else in your conference is also like unstoppable <laughs> yeah like there's a has has this ever happened has has there ever been a a um a playoff year or an or a regular season where all eight teams in the playoff in a conference finished with over a hundred points has that ever happened before because it seems very likely that it's going to happen here washington is the one team is the eighth place team and they have 94. So it's almost a guarantee. They're all going to finish over a hundred points here. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to scroll through them, but like, it seems like so. I'd be it, it's, it's also weird because like just logically, right. Teams always play within their conference and division the most. And yet all these teams are like racking up the wins against like their own division and the western conference somehow like it yeah. like mathematically you'd be like how how can they all have over 100 points when conceivably they're playing against each other more than more often than not yeah i can see i'd love to go into like if you could if there was a way to like pull up the head to heads like the like that like a cross like that uh like that table of like all the head to heads and who won them all yeah essentially because i have to imagine like just looking at the east specifically that those top eight just ate every every team in the bottom six alive. Like there's no way that any of those teams at the bottom won more than maybe a game against each against any of those eight because it's mm-hmm. so top heavy. Like the only and in a way like that makes sense because like you look at the teams that all missed and the only team that really looks out of place there is the Islanders and the Islanders have a good excuse for why they're not in here because yeah. they started the season on the road for a month and a half. And then right as they were about to open the the UBS arena, they got, they got all got (laughs) COVID. COVID. Yeah. They all got COVID. So they have a good excuse for why they had to battle back all the way from like the massive grave they dug themselves into. And they only, and the fact that they only got eliminated yesterday is kind of impressive, but like the rest Mm -hmm. of the group, it kind of like shakes out exactly as you think it would, I guess Montreal technically, because it was like, Oh, they, they, you know, they made the cup final last year people could have seen them making it in again as a wild yeah. card. I think I put them in the wild we card We definitely spot. did. We and were like, very I was optimistic. Like, yeah, because I was like, I know they're not going to be nearly as good, but since they're the cup finalists, okay, let's put them like eight. Let's say they're eighth. And then sure enough, the bottom just completely fell out. And it was like, oh, Carey Price was really carrying this whole team, huh? Um, yeah, just a bit. And then Philly, I think, was the other, was another kind of weird one. Like, But even then, it was so much was based on hoping carter hart just came out of nowhere to be amazing again yeah uh and that didn't work out for them Your goalie optimism you fool yeah i, I yeah god I, I i i don't know what i don't know what they're what the goalie coaching is going what kind I, of goalie coaching they got going i don't on know how you can be like a canucks fan and a goalie yourself and have any optimism about the sport you watch like you're you're a testament to fortitude determination and thank you well <laughs> and no. wait wait hold and stupidity. Oh, thank <laughs> oh, you, God. buddy. Oh, man. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. My mom didn't even say that to me. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, but like, well, for every for every Carter Hart, there's also an Igor Shostakovich who comes out of nowhere to have like a nine forty something. Like, yeah, yeah. The rain. Are there any teams out of this group that like you look at and you're like, oh, I'm I'm shocked that they made it in or they're as high as they are? Because honestly, like, I mean, I kind of put the Rangers in there Rangers. a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Like, because I think of the fact of like all the things they did during the off season where they're like, you know what we need? We need Ryan Reeves. We need yeah. Barkley Goodrow. Ryan Reeves, who I don't think has played most of the year, which might. Uh, yeah. I think I, he's been, I, he's been re- like, yeah, I think, I think so. not most of it, but I, I think, think he he's got been... injured very early in the season and has yeah. not really played much since if I'm, unless I'm missing something. Yeah. Cause I'm looking at their top, uh, their, their, um, I'm looking at their, um, their their forward court and he's not on there he's not even on there he's also not listed as injured so maybe they just healthy scratched him i <laughs> they mean just didn't want to play him well yeah was, i mean he was yeah. too beefy yeah they he, were like you're too big you're too big you're they too got, big and scared they got alexi lafreniere playing fourth fourth line minutes with kevin rooney and dryden hunt and i'm just well, like okay they also but, healthy scratched him the other day which was a bit of a goo. Like, again again like guys they should they re, they really should have swooped in and traded jt miller for lafreniere you could do it you could totally yeah. make that deal happen they're they're crazy enough to do it now um like yeah the rangers are the one are the one in there and even they're like a little bit like buoyed by goaltending for sure but mm-hmm. overall, like they're still a very good hockey team. Like Chris Kreider's been amazing this year. He's like fifty like, goals or something. Yeah, which is, which again, like remember, like a couple years ago, was it last year or the year before, where they were like, "Well, looks like this is going to be it for Chris Kreider. It looks like they're going to trade him at the deadline." Yeah, I think that would have been. I think that was uh, the year before or the year of the bubble because I feel like I remember him being on the block when the Rangers and Canucks were I, playing in like February. I feel like the jokes at that time were like, well, what is Chris Kreider going to get traded to Tampa for? Yes, because that's like, right. That's that was exactly like standard, what it was. Right. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, he's apparently a 50 goal scorer, which I mean, yeah, hey, God, all right. God you didn't trade good for him. Him. Yeah, good for him. I think I is and looking and looking at everything like the series, you're kind of I think it, I don't think any of this is going to change. Right. Like, I don't think. Oh, any, no, God, even no. like the matchups are going to change. We could. Like it's it's like in like God Florida has does well, Florida have to play Florida gets Washington say, okay New New York and Carolina are like in a dead heat they have the same games played same points mm-hmm. uh, same points percentage but Carolina has the edge on regulation wins so in theory if New York keeps playing at the pace they're playing at which it's to the surprise of everybody they could end up in the first seed playing against Boston or Washington for the first round which would yeah. be the only real significant change to the actual playoff brackets, which would be, yeah. I'm which sure, is, a welcome relief to the Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Yeah, which is and which is very possible considering that they have to play that they have Freddie Anderson out right now. I believe he's out at least a week they now with an injury. Have been playing so bad, <laughs> it <laughs> is painful to watch. Was it really that? Was he really masking that much, like for them, like that many of their problems? So. I don't think so. I didn't think they had very many problems in the beginning, but like something happened to make them <laughs> absolutely shit the bed. Ooh, they lost and faith. They, they I, lost. I don't know. Like maybe it, they just. It's, it's shocking. Just, is yeah. There. Oh, Max Domi is a hurricane. I forgot about. Yep. That. I didn't know that. I didn't remember that. He's barely noticeable. That, I, the, that, absolutely that sounds tracks. about right. That sounds about right from every other stop he's had. Uh. Um, I, I, this is the one thing I can offer from my AHL beat is that because of uh, Freddie Anderson's uh, injury, uh, they called up Piotr Kochetkov from the Chicago Wolves. Yes, what and I looked up his stats. I couldn't fucking believe it. He's got a 209 goals against average, a 921 save percentage, and a 13 one and two record in the AHL this season. Fantastic. Where, That's where like, did he find these guys? God well, damn. they found Everywhere. him in the second round of the 2019 draft. Good I, Lord. This, he's just a guy me. out of nowhere who's apparently just going to be where like did John, a guy. What, what, what wizard or what. <laughs> What warlock did 
Don Waddell like make a deal with to become suddenly this good at like I don't everything know what he did? as a general manager? Because remember him in Atlanta, he sucked. He drank like he was he dra- he was the guy who drafted uh, I mean, Patrick Stephan was that his, first overall. Was that his fault though? Did I he... mean, some of them were definitely self inflicted. Like again, no one told you you had to draft Patrick Stephan first overall instead of I... the two Sedins that went immediately after him. Like you know why. You know why the Carolina Hurricanes are as successful as they are is because they promoted Eric Tulski to AGM. And the That's second true. they did that, you know what they did for their drafts? They decided to always trade down to much to the absolute hatred of hockey fans because the hockey drafts purists. are already as long enough <laughs> long as, as they, they are. are. Oh my but when God, you start getting yeah. in the X team is traded for Carolina's 94th pick for the 97th pick and the 142nd pick it drags it out but it's genius because when you're a team that's as contending and successful as carolina and you're still adding 11 or 12 draft picks every draft the chances that you get a piotr kochetkov amplify and it makes you a better team in the long run which is why we've been shouting to the high heavens for years like jim benning just do that let other teams trade up to get the guys they want and trade down for extra picks. And you know what? They did that one draft. They did it twice in a single draft. And you know what? It was Judd Brackett's last one. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Did, did they not draft down for Victor person? Did they not drop down to get him? Was that no, uh, uh Victor person was, a seventh round pick acquired, I believe in a trade with, I think that came back in the Tampa trade. I think. Oh yeah, that's right. And, think. Yeah. They actually, and they've done okay with like, they found some, like some gems in there. They found a couple like, or at wow. least some decent, like potentially who knows they could be, it could have been better. We hope God look, Faber gives me hope that all of these guys are going to be amazing someday. So okay, but gonna, I, I, I trust, I want his positivity. I love bless Faber, but he's also, extremely positive about all these prospects because they answer his phone calls and we've made this joke a hundred times with him i've made this joke with him a hundred times if they don't answer the phone calls that's why they don't get on the canucks army top 20 prospects list that's what <laughs> that's why carson folk doesn't get on the list because i bet you anything he doesn't answer the phone calls uh but a guy like chase waters that guy definitely answers the phone calls so you know what or the text so as as blessed as chris faber is as a person because he's a wonderful guy uh he is overwhelmingly positive about the Canucks prospect pool when he has absolutely no right to be because it's fucking terrible. It's it, 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 it needs some, it needs some ironing out. They're not, <laughs> they're not, they're not the, they're not the Panthers who have been doing like a really good job with their depth pool. And now literally have won 10 games in a row like, and have, and, and just, have a top five NHL team and a top, five ahl team at the exact same time amazing i just i think i tweeted this the other day because i was laughing so hard at, at it but the arizona coyotes as we all know are just a bottom feeder in the nhl but guess what so is their ahl team their ahl team is fucking terrible they have 21 wins out of 63 games jesus <laughs> christ. Jesus <They're> christ awful <laughs> they're so bad it's like shocking yeah. and i think <laughs> this is irrelevant but the san jose sharks had like a weird season they kind of they kind of hung around there early for a little bit they were like surprising everyone with how they were hanging in then all of a sudden like the w- wheels fell off and they just like plummeted their farm team is also fucking terrible yeah. and you know how bad they are they haven't won a game in 12 oh boy they have zero wins now- in 12 games yeah which yeah that sounds about right but and, <laughs> and old now, now to be fair to the well to be fair to the sharks at least here's the thing here's the dip the key difference between the sharks and the coyotes the sharks were actually good for an extended period of time and have a realistic excuse of why their farm system is this- depleted the coyotes have jack shit they have no reason they have no excuse to be as bad as they are and yesterday like i forget I think they had lost. What did they lose the other day to Calgary? Like nine to one after all, losing to the Canucks, like seven to one. And yeah, people yeah. Were, and people were watching and like it was like, oh, this team does not care. Th- this team has checked out entirely. And I'm like sitting there and I'm just thinking like, can we just boot this entire franchise into the sun 
and never see them again. Because you know I'm what? so sick of the Coyotes. I'm I, so sick of them. Get them I, out of here. Get me gonna... a Kachina jersey and yeah. then kick That's them true. into the sun and replace them with a Quebec team or yeah. a Houston team. I don't yeah. care. Anywhere else. <laughs> like, this God. can open up a quick discussion here, but... On one hand, I am completely with you. I'm so fed up of Arizona just being garbage, but I have to give them a bit of credit because while they were absolute garbage over the last, you know, 10 to 20 years, you know, just ballpark, 1996. ballpark their, their entire existence or so, they technically weren't, weren't, really trying to tank in those last like few years of the uh john chaka years like they were just a really poorly constructed team yeah. this year they're fucking terrible and unwatchable but that's by design so a part of me can can forgive them for being such an embarrassment because they're intentionally trying to tank they're doing the toronto thing they're doing the buffalo thing but just on a scale that we haven't seen in which it's literally like like Travis Boyd is their number one center. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're basically doing the normal tanking thing, but because it's coming on the backs of just years and decades of failure, it feels like, like worse, but in a, like when you really expand and look at the context, like this is Doug Armstrong's plan or Bill Armstrong's plan to, to tank and commit to the tank for Bedard or whoever it is. So I can't really fault them for the, eight years prior like it's not his fault they were bad before he's trying yeah. to salvage the failure that was john chaka yeah I, I i do agree with you on that front but like and then but then you come to things where like like you're right like they're trying to tank on purpose how are they doing so far well they're only two points in front they're only two points behind the canadians so a team that wasn't trying to tank as almost as almost out tanked them anyway, just from their own by, by their own flaws. So imagine what happens when the Coyotes ev eventually finish thirty first, despite having tried and <laughs> still don't get Connor Bedard. But the main and have played all that garbage hockey for nothing. Now, but for me, here's the thing. So I, I do agree with you in a sense where I'm like, okay, it doesn't really matter. This year was going to be a wash anyway. Like you were clearly just looking to finish bottom of the barrel because you have no because there's nothing else to look forward to in this group other than what <laughs> like jacob chikrin uh, clayton keller and even chikrin they're trying to trade for yeah. because his because clearly his like his best years are going to come when they're not ready mm -hmm. i except the problem is here's the problem the, the big problem here is that next year they're moving into that 3000 seat college arena, which in itself is supposed to be a big stop gap for this supposed arena. They're getting in Tempe, which just sorry, Tempe, which is like, again, we don't know that that's coming. How do you think, how is Tempe city council going to go and look, well, we got to give this team that finished with, let's see, 22 wins. We got to give them so much money for this arena. That seems yeah. like an investment that won't backfire. Yeah. Couple this won't go poorly the, at all. Yeah. This will go poorly. They'll pay their bills on, they'll pay their bills. They, they didn't at the last, in the last arena, but they'll pay their bills yeah. this time. It, the, it, it did take, it didn't take an athletic bills. article for uh, yeah. uh, th them to pay our tax, their property taxes, but they'll yeah, do it, it took, this time. Yeah. Right. It took the media coverage that they've never once earned in their own market uh, to get to get to to get that done. But uh, maybe they'll maybe they'll be nice this time. Maybe they'll 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 be visited by three spirits uh, on one night uh, and find a change of heart. No, I'm just looking at the fact of like, OK, you, when you play in this college arena next year you have to entice the market to come see you play at those games. And for the first little bit, people will probably show up regardless. They'll probably sell out a, f a few games at the beginning yeah. uh, because of just the, the pure novelty. And whatnot. Yeah. The pure novelty of, Hey, look, this team, this NHL team is playing in a, in a college arena. Like that's kind of interest that in itself is a very interesting, uh, like intimate or hockey atmosphere that you normally wouldn't get. Let's go see, let's go check it out. But what happens if that team is just as bad? as this one again what well, how are you like how are you going to sell tickets to that especially considering knowing the coyotes they're not going to go you know what we should sell these at prices that college students can afford because they're going to be the ones coming to these games they're going to go we're going to charge nhl prices and hope these these spoiled little brats 
pay 80 bucks a, a ticket to make up the difference for all the arena, the games, all the, the attendants were losing. Well, like, did you see the tweet that that one person had where they screen capped the season ticket holder prices that they were oh, being offered? I did. And it was oh, like, no. oh, no, they were like, like double what they currently pay for the actual arena they're in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they, they I, I did, learned nothing. <laughs> you know what? So peeling oh back God. the curtain, folks, this is what I was trying to tell uh, Jamie and Lachlan ahead of time. The story that I was trying to remember that happened over the weekend, and it was a tweet. It wasn't a Reddit post because that's where I always go for my stories. It was some person on Twitter who had screen capped the email they got from their season ticket uh, rep, and it was like, I am being offered seats at the new arena that are double the price that I currently pay. And there isn't like a lower bowl or an upper bowl. It's just the general section. Like they're, they're price gouging people for a shittier arena, man. It's yeah, terrible. What, oh my God. Like good Lord. You know what? Like why, why would any person pay this? There's literally, well, there's literally now, especially more than ever, there's going to be a team. There's a team in Phoenix the literally the Phoenix Suns, who are first in the Western Conference, who you can probably go see for dirt for even cheaper. Why would they go see? Why would they go see your shitty product? Why would they go see? I don't know, freaking like I don't know who's even on the team anymore. Why would they go see Shane Goss to spare play fifteen minutes a night or, when they could watch like Chris Barrett Paul Hayden. and Devin Booker? Like, come on, come remember, on. Remember Barrett Hayton, the guy remember that Barrett Hayton, John Chaka's last. uh laugh at the organization was <laughs> was drafting that guy because his head shape or whatever like indicated he'd be a star player uh, oh yeah oh, like paving the way for quinn hughes to get drafted <laughs> oh, oh my god i, I oh, don't you know what I, don't you know what i'm talking about no okay so part of so the original john chaka like the reason why everyone had like doubts that he knew what the fuck he was doing at all was that they had draft picks taken away from them because they had been testing players ahead of the draft yeah, yeah, using yeah. phrenology where they were like <laughs> they're like measuring like player skull shapes and like all this weird <laughs> shit that's, that, like, analytics, they did. Ba that's well, analytics they did. baby <laughs> they don't know specifically if it was like if they there was any actual like, size but it was like yeah. they were doing weirdo stuff like like i'm not gonna say they were using crystals to see if like <laughs> these guys would be like nhl stars but it was like it was all this weird, unproven science that, like, they were doing, like, illegally, of course, because like, you're not allowed to test players ahead of time. Yeah. To try and get a competitive advantage by seeing if these guys would be worth drafting. And so the year that, I guess, that they first realized they were doing this was that Barrett Hayden draft. Oh, because, like, and, I knew they had that, like, illegal, they did illegal testing on them. I didn't know what they did. Yeah, it's all <laughs> it's all very weird stuff. And I think... I think actually this is one of Jason Bot like one of my favorite Jason Botchford write-ups was that he basically did a huge takedown of John Chaka and how he was basically a huge hack fraud. And like no one could prove the analytic systems that he had created uh for Stathletes. Like no one knew what kind of proprietary data they were providing teams. He pointed out the obvious um the conflict of interest because he obviously was still a part owner of the company while it still existed under his sister, Megan Sheka and how she was still selling data to teams and how there'd be a complete conflict of interest that an NHL GM was profiting off of data being sold to his competitors. And Actively part of that his, was him advantage. Yeah. His and so advantage. part of Botchford's piece was basically like, about how they were being fined for testing players illegally and not supposed to. And he had brought up how one of the, the presentations he had made at one of those, um, the stats hack things that they used to hold in uh, Columbus that was led by Allison Lucan uh, was basically like a giant presentation on how they can possibly measure a player's brain size to try and determine whether or not they would have the capabilities of becoming a quality NHL player. <laughs> like, so that was the assumption Lord. that like, well, this is what he had been applying in his testing of draft eligible players. Oh my God. So, yeah. Just complete okay. nut job stuff, which is amazing. Oh my so God. I do have the, okay. So I do, I did pull up out of sheer curiosity. I did pull up the coyotes uh, season ticket stuff. 
yeah. then I also pulled up the Canucks one just to see what the comparables are. Now, this isn't an, a direct comparable because I can't find the Canucks uh, prices, I don't believe. I can't. Sure. Uh, maybe they're somewhere in here, but I've just and I just haven't looked hard enough. But from what mm-hmm. I can tell, I don't see I don't see any prices for next year yet. But we'll go off single game tickets, which are always okay. more expensive anyway. Yeah. So the for the worst seat at Rogers Arena, the Canucks charge fifty four bucks Canadian plus uh, fees plus or actually sorry that is including the the Ticketmaster fees. So normally it's forty three fifty with the ten fifty Ticketmaster fee or whatever. So fifty four bucks a ticket, which is mm-hmm. not which is expensive. Like that's definitely a price for U S dollars too, right? No, that's Canadian actually. Oh, it's so okay. it's a li- so a little bit a little bit cheaper. So a little sure. bit cheaper than that. Um, now. On the other hand, if you want to be a member of the uh, the Crescent Moon Club, uh, the uh, the exclusive club of the season ticket holders, a full season ticket holder of the Arizona Coyotes, the cheapest option is to sit in the den, which per game will cost you eighty nine dollars, <laughs> eighty nine dollars a seat, a ticket. The den. Maybe the I, den. I, I just about yeah, the den. Tank. You can sit I, in the den. It's a cold, the den. I was picturing it's a cold like room. We lock you in the door, and there's like a small <laughs> yeah, CCTV it's monitor like some with guy's uh, basement, Valley Sports like, Arizona. <laughs> like some guy's basement mud room that he like yeah. watches Coyotes games from. This is Vlad. He's going to be your bodyguard. Uh, yeah. He's going to make your popcorn. sure you don't leave. Now be quiet uh, and watch your, your like, it's like It's like a small cup of popcorn. It's like a solo cup full of popcorn. Yeah. Take it and take it yeah. and enjoy. Like Mother's you're watching. A, yeah, it is so. And the de- the den, to be clear, is a um, it is a it's a small section behind the uh, coyotes net and that it, uh, behind the coyotes net in the corners. It's not even like a. It, it, it's not even like in the back, the like the immediate back. That is the cheapest option per game oh, yeah. for if you got full season tickets. Ninety dollars, ninety American, American. ninety Oof. bucks American. If you want half season tickets and you only want to see twenty two game or t- what twenty something games of the Coyotes doing jack shit, it's a hundred and ten dollars. Like it's. And but don't worry, you do get you do get you do get priority access for parking. Not a not an actual parking Yay. spot, just priority access to one. Uh, let's see what else you get. You also get oh god, you get access to purchase away trips. <laughs> like oh my god, they they get you get access to join them to so they can send you to a better arena. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like good lord, oh man, see I'm where the stars at- play. Yeah, literally you get, oh my God, some of this stuff is completely crap where they're just like, here's like you get exclusive access to a uh, dedicated service executive, whatever that means, uh, best available seat locations, which yeah, I better, uh, <laughs> playoff ticket priority, <laughs> good one, uh, n- a member newsletter, oh, <laughs> and and then Ticketmaster account manager, you know, that thing that even s- single game ticket people get, like I have a Canucks I have a Canucks Ticketmaster account, which I I've never owned season tickets in my life. This is very funny, but oh, you also get a custom box, but I, no clue what that <laughs> means, and a member lapel pin. Cool. Oh, <laughs> sick. Sign so, me you know, up. so what? So five bucks that costs five bucks to make. Okay, like some of this stuff is just hilarious i guess the meet and greets with the gm and president are kind of worth it uh that would be incredible like you like like are you uh, like my like hi uh, excuse me where do you find the audacity yeah jamie i don't know if you're like a simpsons watcher i think you might maybe you're a little too young or maybe you didn't come up during the prime simpsons era but lachlan you don't know this reference i'm making but it would be no serious is this a joke (laughs) because like like, what would you even see the say to the GM or the owner at this point? Like, you cheap shit. Like, this is pathetic. Ninety nine dollars so, uh, a ticket for like, like I could just go to the was the Sun Devils games for ten bucks and on two dollar yeah. beer night. Like, no why would I ever pay for this? No college student is paying this price, and they're the people that you should be trying to get because they're the ones that actually are going to like. Because here's the thing, right? If they, if if you're run by smart people. What they'll go is they'll take a look at the fact they're playing in this arena and say, okay, we're going to purposely price our tickets 
competitive to more or less competitive to the ASU team uh, yeah. because those kids that come to those games, by the time the team is good and playing in the new arena, they're going to be out gra- having, they'll have graduated likely out of their programs. They'll be in a full-time job and they'll be, and they'll be able to pay regular NHL prices when the team is at its peak. And they'll be remember all the good times they had with their college buddies at games and those in those first few, in those first few years to come and see us in the new one. Mm-hmm. And that's the way they should be doing it. But no, they're going to try and price gouge the crap out of everybody. Like, because this is, this is how they're run. They're not going to, yeah, they're not that rocks. Good for them. They're going to get, they're going to get re- like a, what is it? They're going to get a, like just contracted entirely. Like they're not even going to make it to Houston. They're just going to get swallowed up. And it's like, well, uh, we're back to 31 now, yeah. like midway through the year. They're just going to cancel all the games. Be like, well, they're bankrupt. Uh, goodbye. Uh, liquidate all assets. Like, good Lord. This is the dumbest. This is so bad. This is so ridiculous. This, I, what a I, cool I franchise. Will- what a cool franchise. Yeah. That's definitely not in, in any way a massive black eye on the NHL as a whole and a huge disgrace. <laughs> like, let's, good uh, Lord. let's move on from a, a pathetic franchise. Before I get mad. On. Yeah, lockers get, get a little mad. heated. Lockers <laughs> get a little heated. Um, get them out of here. When like when it's like whenever you start talking about like Jim Benning and like the failure to prioritize like getting picks and no no matter what podcast like you have to like you have to like pinch yourself to be like we're not going to go down this rabbit hole because yeah. you'll spend the next forty five minutes talking about it because there's no way you can. It's just like yeah. a drain spiral. Like you have to acknowledge it. And that's what the Coyotes do to Lachlan because he loves the Kachina so much. And to I see love it. those jerseys. Lachlan, jerseys we don't have time. Incredible. We don't have time, Lachlan. I'm just pointing it out. I'm so, sorry. Uh, they're giving me the light. Uh, yeah, we, we flash the light at you. The music starts playing uh, yeah. to get you off well, the stage. That's probably why that we talked about the Yotes the past two weeks because I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Yeah. drives um, me crazy. It drives me okay. crazy. Well, for something that won't drive us crazy, we can all talk about this because we're it's a little neat. Uh, we're obviously getting reverse retros next year again because the league needs money. And so what better way to do that than uh, some cheap merchandise? So the Washington Capitals are apparently bringing back the Screaming Eagle logo, which I'm sure we'll all have opinions. Uh, Jamie, your thoughts on bringing back the Screaming Eagle logo? Why not? Correct. I would... Yes. Like, right? Now, Why not? Now here, yeah. Exactly. We brought back that, the ombre. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Why yeah. not? Let's see. I, I And I, I do have it. It looks like they're not even, and it's not even that they're bringing back, say, the reverse retro from the previous year. It looks like they're bringing it back uh, as the, in the regu- in the original colors for the reverse retro this time. Around. Oh, really? Yeah, which I will, uh, for anyone who's a little too uh, too young to remember these, which frankly, in a way, I am because they yeah, never were. Say. <laughs> which, so like this one, they're bringing, this is the, this is, uh, this is the, what the it looks like. or whatever? Yeah. It, now for, for okay. uh, context, what makes this a reverse retro is that the they've never done this. They've only had the Screaming Eagle logo on a blue jersey, like the, like the blue of, of the bottom here. Yeah. Uh, or in a white jersey, they when they yeah. do black. Jerseys, I remember the it's white. Always this logo. It's always the it's always that logo on the shoulder patch. Um, yeah. Yeah. But and so yeah, they're a, a rumor to be bringing that back next year because again, the last one did so well. Um, it looks like they're going with some, and this is the this is him proving that he's got his sources, I guess, because uh, he's done it. He's done this before because okay, he's proving okay. that he know he's done it before, and it's like okay, I I, I we believe you, buddy. Uh, yeah. We believe All you. Right. Um, and that's going to be great because the screaming Eagle, they should bring back full time, honestly. Yeah. The, the caps, the logos have never really done anything for me, but at least the, the screaming Eagles, like kind of like, I mean, it's not iconic, but it's got like the, like, I don't know. An Eagle is kind of iconic imagery for, for Americans. So it's whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll I take st- it. <laughs> yeah, I will say like I think what they should do like uh, the the jersey they wore last year the the reverse retro with the screaming eagle they wore last season I honestly think that should be their home their regular jersey like that should mm-hmm. be their home jersey and I think you should go back to like the retro version of like the the scripted caps logo oh excuse me as like the third jersey I think that kind of fits a little better I think it lo- I think it works a lot just don't bring back that like White House or like the capital the U S Capitol oh the, yeah the capital I don't uh, love that I don't like that well, one. 
you definitely can't b- bring it back now that it's been stormed and uh, desecrated by uh, <laughs> white trash rednecks in America. What if they just? So, oh god, that would be that would be something that like like a bad franchise would do. They'd be like, it's time to storm <laughs> the Capitol with these alternate jerseys, and it's like, oh no, why did you do that? Yeah. Like, no, you should have thought this through. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, um, that, let's get into some other fun news. Um, I mean, I'm going to say it's 50 for 50 fun news because one of these persons I'm very excited to see join a minority ownership. The other, I could not give two flying fucks about. (laughs) For those that are not aware, Seattle Kraken announced that Macklemore, Boo, and Marshawn (laughs) Lynch have joined the Seattle Kraken as minority owners, which I I don't know if they actually like put up the cash because, I mean, it was like a $900 million franchise and I truly doubt that macklemore put up you know millions of dollars for a minority ownership stake usually you'd have to put like quite a chunk of change to get involved so i i wonder if this is like a a drake with the raptors thing where it was like like hey give us give us 200 grand and then we'll just pay you to be like brand ambassadors to like promote the game to like your markets or whatever maybe maybe i do think that both of those guys are part of the ownership group for the sounders as well though the seattle Sounders oh really uh, soccer team yeah so i think there's a history of them because okay. um seattle in particular has done a really good job of like getting in um locals getting local, in locals, local like, celebs local celebs to buy into the ownership group which is actually a really smart call because not only does it mean you have ownership not only if especially for like celebrities who are very less likely to be any sort of like hands-on ownership and are willing to just like put up the cash no problem like and front and foot the bills without yeah. uh having too much of an impact it also it also further like like cements it in the area that it's in not that like not like the kraken or the sounders have any chance of ever moving but like that mm-hmm. idea of like having it rooted in local ownership is really difficult for some places so it's really good to have them around um i will i will say um i will say i this might get my music card taken away but i enjoy i enjoyed the heist as an album that was a good album i haven't listened to much of his newer stuff but i liked that whole album that him and ryan lewis had it's very nostalgic it's got some good songs in there he's got a whole song about the mariners in there i and uh (laughs) there's some other stuff it's a very seattle album it's a very it's very seattle-y um and i think he yeah okay so you're both children so you didn't you didn't really grew or you didn't party you didn't hit up the clubs at the time of that album still don't still don't. Uh, don't do drugs or alcohol kids that's really bad for you okay don't do drugs. yeah that's uh we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't yeah, yeah we wouldn't yeah. be proponents yeah. of that in any way no yeah certainly <laughs> not, not at all um, but anyways when you were to in 2008 or 2009 whenever the fuck his stupid shitty album came out <laughs> Every single bar you went to played thrift shop two to three so, times a night. So good. It was so on good. every Amazing. commercial. Every single hockey game played it once or twice. Yep. Every single white person on the fucking planet <laughs> knew That's, every single yeah. lyric, had their own little thrift shop dances and hand signals and whatever the fuck it was. And it was the most embarrassing garbage song it was not catchy it was obnoxious and to see that many people just love it drove me insane but look at all the ever i heard it for people to go to like goodwill and actually like go and like no, you know remind no. them hey you don't have to pay 90 dollars for crap like <laughs> but it elevated it created this whole subgenre of people going to thrift shops finding old shit and then reselling it for hundreds of dollars because thrift like thrift shop finds became the new thing look at elias Pettersson's instagram which we were also talking about on this program and how he was like shopping downtown at some thrift store and bought like a mickey mouse sweater sweater that was like 450 dollars and it was like some piece of crap from like 1993 and you're just like this is Macklemore's fault. He's a vintage king. A vintage <laughs> it's stupid. King. I hate it. Vintage, vintage clothes are good if you get vintage the good is ones. fine nice. when you just when you just own it. But when you go out and buy like a seven hundred dollar shirt that was like found in like a waste bin outside of Value Village, that's the way you do it. Like no, one I hate it. You don't this have is Macklemore's fault, especially because you're not giving back to those 
terrible companies. You're not giving to the terrible <laughs> company. You're you're buying it second hand. They don't get that money. They don't get that again. They don't get re- royalties on that second purchase. Value Village could have used a four hundred dollar sale, but instead it went to some you know kid working out of his mom's garage going to thrift shops and ripping these people off. So I don't like it one bit. Cody, can we go karaoke? Can we go to karaoke? (laughs) Yeah, let's go karaoke. All three of us sing sing thrift shop as a a unit. Let's go. I'll leave immediately. No, you know what we need Lock to do? And and I've been, just wrap yes. in your face. Yes, we'll just wrap, we'll wrap in his <laughs> face really and look really bad like, doing it. Yeah, like, hand, like a full, if you, can, if you can do that, but have like a full choreographed dance, I, don't, I yeah. might change my mind on yeah. how my feelings on Macklemore if you put that much effort into, okay. Okay. into an now, embarrassing dance or an embarrassing do. karaoke. For- for sure, we have to do karaoke at some point, Cody, because I've been meaning for us to do like a a, re, a, ma- a, a shot for shot remake of uh, <laughs> Dean Pelton and uh, Jeff singing Kiss from from a Rose. Yeah, <laughs> we need that, to do that at some. That point. is completely fine with me. I'll yeah, do that. There, yeah, there we go. That's you, that's the ticket. Okay, but you have to shave your head because if I do it, oh, in my, it's not growing back. <laughs> Oh, that that might be true, but uh, God, I don't know if I can part with the hair. I look so bad with short hair. That's a. I'll wear a bald cap. I'll do it like a just, like. Just get a yeah. wig. I'll just get a wig. <laughs> yeah, come on, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, okay. okay. Um, uh, last little thing here before we go, because the Canucks game is about to start pretty quickly here. Bit of a sad news. Um, obviously not like too impactful to the three of us because we are relatively young and were, did not come up during his time, but uh, the great Mike Bossy passed away uh, over the weekend. Uh, this, this is apparently like the third alumni of the Islanders to pass away this season alone, which yeah. is like just crazy. Like it's bad enough that like their team, like just had the worst season imaginable where they were on the road for the first like two months and then get a COVID outbreak. And it's like all these like staples of their like history. just like pass away of like, like for Mike Bossy, it was just like cancer out of nowhere. Like that's that's horrible. So of course the Crease cast extends its condolences to Mike Bossy and his family because that's terrible. Um, I have the only story about Mike Bossy imaginable because my father-in-law got into the or he works in the news industry. And when he started, he was a cameraman for the Vancouver Canucks, like not for them, but for the local news station. And so he was kind of the guy to film day-to-day tape he'd film the games he'd uh, film practices and all that stuff and so the first year that he started i believe was the canucks cup run against the, the new york islanders and so he actually got to fly on the plane with them to new york for for games one and two and he said when the team was flying back after game two, he said it was the quietest plane ride ever because they had just got shelled by Mike Bossy and the Islanders in two games. And sure yeah. enough, they got swept in the final two, lose at home after a mir- what is called a miracle run of the 80s with that Stan Sneal led team. Um, uh, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's a that's a throwback. That Islander, we should we, well for starters, we should have your father-in-law on the show at some point because clearly he's got he's probably got some good Canuck stories in there. No, fair enough. All right. Well, <laughs> either way, either way, the God, like the yeah, Mike Bossy is one of those players who, uh, like, he didn't even play as long as he could have, I believe, due to injuries. I think yeah. he ended up a only degenerative playing, like, back years. issue. Yes, uh, he played ten years and he played ten of the most impactful years. I think anyone is like any players ever had his rookie season. He had 91 points, which is un unfathomable. Like, yes, it came in like the late seventies, early eighties where goaltending wasn't particularly good, but that is, but that's still, still, that's impressive. Even for that era is that's, that's, that's a ridiculous mark. And recently we had the whole thing with like Austin Matthews, where he hit 50 goals in 50 games, did it with a bit of an asterisk. Cause it didn't come huge in the first asterisk. Year. Huge, uh, huge asterisk. Uh, I don't even know if it's that huge. It's kind. It's, it's still pretty darn impressive. It's still 50, impressive either 50 way. Fifty refers to fifty goals in your first fifty games. It's not fifty in whatever fifty game stretch. <laughs> that would be and really I funny. Will, it's like he scored I will fifty goals. Go to my like, grave. Thank he you. scored fifty. He scored twenty five in the first season and twenty five in the second. That counts, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, but uh, either way, like yeah, Mike Bossy was the second player to do that ever, where he scored fifty and fifty, and. 
like just insane to think about today. Like if a player could even do that, could accomplish that with the, with, with today. And yeah, the Canucks found out very quickly just how just, he just, just, he single-handedly beat them in that final. Like yeah, I think it's seven goals in four games. Jeez. <laughs> seven <laughs> yeah. goals. And yeah, that's a, that's a tough that's one. Good. That's, um, that's, yeah. Tough break, tough break. Uh, he was, and he was, and he was playing with one hand tied behind his back for like two of those. Like, yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, mean he, in a sense, because that was clutch and grab, right? So like they were just pu- throwing themselves oh, at God. him to stop him from taking shots and he'd still score. Oh God. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've seen, there's some, there's old video specifically of like Billy Smith during that era. And the just son of a bitch that he was in net where he would like, literally there's one, well, literally like he, no, he would like, well, so there's one play that is uh, honestly like, again, shocking to see like from today's lens where Stan Smeal just gets a little too close to him, gives him a little chop on the pads or whatever, going for a puck. And then as the puck is going to the other side, you see Billy Smith stick come up and purposely hit him right in the eye with the stick. (laughs) And he goes down bleeding. No call. No call. The referee doesn't call it. And Billy Smith is just sitting there like, I didn't do anything. As you clearly watch the video of him lift up and try and swipe him in the face with the swipe him in the face with the stick. And he did that all the time where that was like his whole thing is he would like purposely like slash guys in the arms or in the hand to try and break something. And like with and with a wood stick. So, of course, it was just like ridiculous that he got away with that stuff. The 80s were another huh. animal entirely and yeah. just uh, hey the Canucks that, got there like even if they didn't win they got there that's still impressive like against that the, team and the bar has been that low ever since um okay last one before we uh sign out for the thing we did have a fan question come in from at adam k blatt from adam kirzenblatt <laughs> the monstars come down and challenge the canucks to a game of basketball who makes your starting lineup so i joked saying chies on and then players two to five don't matter but then i realized wait they're playing basketball so this joke doesn't really apply yes so i i was mistaken because the logic would be you just pick chara myers tage thompson like whoever else is like six foot six plus right and like that's that's it they're connects that's true. Yeah, they're Canucks. If they're Canucks, if for the Canucks, oh, the Canucks. I, now, okay. But you well, also got to keep. But you also got to keep in mind that we're talking Looney Tunes rules here. So uh, even yeah, okay. so height doesn't ne- so height doesn't necessarily guarantee success here. It's got to be who is the most crafty, who's got the most, who's most likely to show up with a box of TNT uh, and just explode the opponent. Uh, who will draw okay. a hole on the court that they fall okay. through? Like, so Garland. Garland. So Garland. Yes. Garland. Yes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That is it. I think we're all on the same page here. I think we know what our team's going to be. It's going to be Niels Hoglander. It's going to be Nick Patan. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Connor Garland. And who else is really short? I think we, you know what? I still think you high more. Matthew High more. That's your your all star lineup. I think we take Pedersen as well because he's he's got the. I, he's tall, but he still has the Bugs Bunny era. Like he's still got that Bugs Bunny like wit to him. I think that it would work. Like he's got that that wry wit. I, I think, think you need a little bit of that. Myers, the then. Yeah, I think okay, Myers as we'd, well. Maybe we'd sub out Matthew you, Highmore for Tyler Myers because mm-hmm. Tyler Myers actually looks like that one monster from the original Space Jam that's like really tall. Yeah, he'd have the whole he'd have the whole thing where he can just like stretch his torso to like in to like go over to to like hit the baskets like that's that'll be his whole thing it's or like tyler myers with a bunch of short people yeah and yeah he will, exactly and he will kick butt <laughs> that's a that's a thing let's put tyler myers in nba 2k and see how he does like <laughs> that'd be that i'd love to see that um yeah lifts with his brother. now do we get his do we get <laughs> yeah, i was gonna go. say do we get his in this scenario is the bill murray like the guy who shows up in the last it second is. is that his brother is that I think tyler myers that, brother 100 i think that would be the logic that actually yes. have made a better space jam movie than the one with the lebron second. james yeah the, Le- the lebron one was uh was something as i say wearing the jersey look i bought the jersey not for the lebron aspect of it i bought it because i just wanted i wanted a, a looney tunes jersey like of course you did go. of like, course let's you go did. Like, let's go. Uh, but yeah, I think, okay. So yeah, so what do we, we finally, so we've landed on here. We've landed on, uh, we've landed on Ho- Hoaglander, Myers, Patterson, um, 
uh, who am I? Who am I? Garland, and then who's our who's our fifth again? Is it Batan? Yeah, because Batan and- is like also like five foot eight or something. Like he's also a short king. Yeah. What about JT Miller? Where does he factor in here? I feel like he's got uh, a little he's, bit. He of could be the ref. He could be the ref because he's <laughs> he is not really child friendly. Like he wouldn't survive a PG rated film, right? Oh, like, that's true. Because you can't be you can't be saying the f word at Bugs I mean, Bunny. I mean, there's I mean, you've seen the first Space Jam. There's some weirdly adult humor in that movie. Yeah, but <laughs> he might. He's not. Like, he's not. He's not. Michael Jordan enough. wasn't like Taz. You fucking piece of shit. Play better. <laughs> you know, because that's what. No, nah, that's just Michael Jordan in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you watched the last scene. dance, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, it's true. He took it. He took everything personally. He just got mad yeah, at everybody. And I took that. Per- J- JT Miller would go, and I took that personally. But for <laughs> when he doesn't get picked for the team for the Toon Squad, exactly. Does um, Finn have to play just for like the anthropomorphic animal aspect? Does he have no, to play? No. Finn oh. sucks. He can. Just oh, there's your ref. There's your ref. Around. Actually, Finn's your ref. I think that's got a. But that would be a bias. That's you can't. But so was Marvin the Martian. Later. Marvin the Martian was the ref in the last one, and there it was aliens oh, yeah. versus Looney Tunes. So they just they it's just gotta even out. But I think he was the ref because he was impartial because he was both an alien like the Monstars and a Looney Tune. That's right. That did work. Yeah, so that's right. But he still handed he out a bunch of flagrants. Like, come on, <laughs> that ref. Yeah, yeah. Was, that was there were some Tim Donaghy right. shenanigans going on there. All right, this is how you wrap up the show, folks. You need an alien. <laughs> Because the Monstars and a Canuck to be the ref, so you get Elias Patterson to be your ref. There you go. That's that's the winner. That's how it is, folks, and that's how we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's always fun to have all three on the panel. Get a whole variety of perspectives. Get some Canucks action. When you're listening to this, hopefully it's because they've won against the Dallas Stars on Monday night. If not, well. Tough shit. We'll catch you next time on the other episode. I have Cody Sievertson. You can catch me at Cody Sievertson on Twitter, my website, ahlnuxharvest.com. Theoretically, we'll have content on it eventually. Lachlan, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Lock in the Crease, and you can also find my writing work at CanucksArmy.com. I'll be writing there a lot more over the next little while now that my school is done. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. And, Jamie, where can the fine folks find your work? and your content uh they can find me on twitter at underscore jamie kalo and yeah and follow her instagram so you can see all the delicious food oh yeah you can follow me on instagram at jamie kalo eats hell yes wait hell yeah i was cruising it the other day and i was like man i can't wait to not eat any of this when i get home and be miserable (laughs) don't look at it when you're hungry we'll do we'll do some food (laughs) i'm always hungry (laughs) <laughs> We're probably going to do some off the posts where it's just us like sampling food. So that's going to be, that's that we, we have that to look forward to in the off season. Yeah. And you guys have get to look forward to that too. You'll probably check it out on our Patreon at patreon.com slash creasecast or our YouTube channel, which I've already plugged earlier in the show. Give us five star reviews. Give us some likes. Ding that fucking bell people. I'm telling you, I'm going to start getting angry. <laughs> Anyways, love y'all. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.